Um, um, my sincere thanks to Joan and Erica for this invitation um, and this chance to read with these wonderful poets um, and all of you for attending today and taking time out of your Saturday to be here. It means probably more than anything right now, so I appreciate it. Um, the majority of my reading is going to come from my book, Shade of Blue Trees, uh, which was released last summer. Um, and then the last couple poems are going to be what I'm calling from my B-sides or poems that are written during the same time period, but not in the book. And I'm going to start with an ekphrastic poem uh, called A Woman in Blue Reading a Letter um, from the Vermeer painting. And it begins with an epigraph from Nico Case. It was so clear to me that it was almost invisible. It was mid-afternoon when I arrived in Amsterdam. The flight from California fueled a headache I couldn't shake. I checked into my hotel room, hoping a hot shower would restore me. I was slipping on my robe when I noticed that the blinking red light on the room's phone, a message from my mother to call home. Her voice was low, a strange mixture of indecision and sadness. She spoke slowly, as though lowering an anchor. There had been an accident. Tommy, close as a brother, was dead. A drunk driver crossed the divider, hit him head on, the engine in his lap. I don't remember telling her goodbye, hanging up the phone or getting dressed, but I rode the elevator down and walked the stone paved streets, shell-shocked under a turquoise sky. At the Rijksmuseum, whose rib vaulted portico remind me of a Gothic crypt. Bicycles sped through the passageway before I entered. And upstairs, Vermeer had a room of his own. I stepped off the hardwood floor and sank deep into blue carpet. She was on the damask wall next to the milkmaid, illuminated by skylight glow. So small, she could fit in my suitcase. But I didn't care about the light or the colors. I didn't care about the woman or the news in her letter. It was the map hanging behind her. The one detail that had seemed incidental before was all I could focus on now. All those meandering lines leading to and away from home. This is called Letter to the Rain. Come at me with guillotine sheets. I will be happy in separation. Forgive my sadness. It's not your fault. Your window taps tender me, the slow dance and fog. You bring greening mountains, phantoms as morning steam off fence rails. Still I gutter, candlelight starved for air. Remember the pelican who flew in the schoolyard's field? How are you so far from home, all of us dreaming coastline and cliffside, the phosphorus veil? It's hard to find a safe place in winter bare branches. I think of him often, how you said nothing except in downpour. I am not strong, dear deluge, dear cloudburst, dear torrent. During the night, you've taken the spider's elegant home and made the lilies shy. You have taught me light will not wait, and yet I cannot be the only one who blows kisses to the ocean when leaving. What I know today is, if you ask me why there are tears in my eyes, I will tell you it's just the wind. This is one of uh, four longer poems in the book, a uh, cornerstone of each sent, uh, section. There's four sections. It's an invented form called the panel. And this is the only one in the book who is about a single person. And each section is about an aspect of Marie Antoinette's life. It's called Panels from a Courtly Spring, and it begins with an epigraph from the late uh, wonderful poet Melinda Markham. The leaves around her breathe citrus and dusk. I think of you when the last light glints off the roof tiles. One, 
You shall be queen, an Austrian pawn in Versailles. Let's not speak of consuming love, my obedient swan. Soon will be time for judgment and lies. Cornflower satin, heels on parquetry. She orders nests for her hair to keep skylarking near. Wears the clouds on her finger to be swallowed in vapor. His passion grows for libraries and locks. Intricacies of cogs and clocks beguile him, but no cock crows among their orange groves. Pile on the gilt, gilt, geld, but no pollen from his anther. Seven years of chaste moons and the sheets are still dry. She would ask him to hold her, but doesn't know where his hands have been. Betwixt the banquets and balls, she's cursed for mounting like a man in buckskin breeches. Gossip glitters than kaleidoscopes in every mirror. Too many harlequin stares and wide-open vistas, yet she cannot awaken her homesick lungs. She compares her life to waves in opulence and royal, but will never see the sea. Send a letter to my mother. Tell her I am trying. Two. O oh, grapes and fermentation, bless your rivers filled with blood, dove, and blush. In book of hours and incantations, time unfolds between piping calls of thrush. Fireflies over the meadow, soft spangle of tapers, the hem of her chemise catching on reeds. She carries a small basket of radishes, rubies for shire horses who soft lip her palm. Here she runs rose wild, banishes hard eyes and whalebone stays, her mother's voice locked in a lacquer box. Hope wing and bud opened, he waits with flasks of wine and stolen figs, his long coat blankets the ground. They speak of amulets and falcons, parlor games and nightingales, turn yearning's blue fire into a dreamscape fugue. Notes of jasmine and neroli, far-off troubadours garland the air. Leaning into her, his tongue traces small flowers along her throat. Send a whisper through the lindens to dispel this tryst. Three. No chance remains for this foreigner at court, where rumor reigns the most scapegoating sport. Her confidence and guards draw close at the palace, Spry teeming sea change, empty bellied, mouth full of malice. The night of rain is unexpected, flint eyed and greening. Candlelight silhouettes run on high ceiling fear. The wilding roars from chamber to chamber, clamber up pastel walls. She's barefoot, racing, barely outrunning the metal clamor of blades and pikes. Hecatomb harvest. Errant gardeners chopping down hedgerows, the golden orchard bright with blood. Send compassion to my daughter, she'll lose her brother next. Four. O oh, mother, cool empress, is this what you imagined for your landlocked girl? No peace in the fortress, no rue-weighted bones. I did what was asked, loyal until I left the world. On the final morning, her brave face blooms backwards under the glade where roots embrace silence, forever hide her display. She wool gathers in her garden, steady steps. The ordered beds are still, but strangely broken with lowering furrows of fresh turned soil. Bound behind her back, the last hand she held was her own pale hair shorn close as a lamb's coat her crown of lost light send a wagon to the square and bring my body home thanks for hanging in for that one i know it's a long hanging. one <laughs> hanging in that was this gorgeous. is um this is called departure and many of the poems in this book are about grief of some sort um specifically about my parents and this one was for my mother. Two months ago, I scribbled poem notes on hospital paper towels. My mother dying, snowed on morphine. 
pneumonic lungs, sinking boats she wanted no one to bail out. Her small hands inflated twice their size as if to keep afloat. The echocardiogram detailed a scallop shell of aortic waves, mitral valve murmurations. How many secrets did her starlings harbor? To mark each changing hour, Pegasus nailed mid-flight on the beige wall, shook his mane from side to side. I consulted the meadow priests of purple thistle, whose prickly heads provided no comfort. They said, death is a circling wolf. There will be no one left to call you by your full name. Grief falls in rain-whipped sheets. The shadows of the dead weigh more than you know. I looked to the night sky for a comet tail, but only cold stars stared back, unblinking. That month my mother died, I did not bleed, and the tips of my hair wintered. A book finished inside me. My ink tongue froze. Uh, these are a lot of poems about the body as well in this book. This, this is the first one I wrote after um, a hysterectomy. Self-portrait is empty reliquary. No saint has ever lived here. The ultrasound, my oma's dying by an open fire. Body truthing the bog, dead leaves and asphodel, the strangest fruit, the never born. Thumb-worn rosary, beads now stick in my teeth. Is barren ground any less sacred? Silver leaf my insides, place a candle in my hollow, follow, fallow. Even broken glass refracts light. Suture, specter, sepulchre, but look what you have made in fall's gold air. Hector's plowed, harrowed, hollowed. Stone webs of scar tissue tracery. Without my cervix, I am no less queen. Open me, see there's nothing left to give. To no longer smell of blood. No saint will ever live here. This is Waiting for Karen in the ER, and uh, this epigraph is from Audrey and Rich. Bad news is always arriving. Make a fist. The ambulance ride begins with a deep poke into a surprised vein. Open, close, time-lapse photography, a lotus unfurling in my palm. I see sunlight breaking through crowns of eucalyptus, breathe oxygen through a tube. I'd recognize his face anywhere, paramedic Gauguin. Civilization is what makes you sick. Is that why your Christs are yellow and green? Yes, and blue trees. What of the red door in the forest? We are never out of the woods. Gurneys glide, gondola quiet through corridored canals. An oarsman ferries me into an x-ray room. His shark tooth bracelet clangs against the metal buoy. I want to dive into his sea foam scrubs, breaststroke into march. The doctor orders a rainbow belt of slender vials. She pockets my blood in her jungle print top, swings on a vine and disappears into Rousseau's foliage. I don't see her again for two hours. She's consulted the gorilla who is sitting on my chest, and I eat red jello with a spork. Time drifts through saline solution. A slow drip counts the days, small hours. I have the room to myself, so tempting just to lie there waiting, stock still, with a coin in my mouth. Um, a lot of poems were written at Big Sur, and that um, landscape is like a character in the book. It features very prominently. So these next few are about that or take place there. This is Begin and End at Big Sur. See the coral dust over the mountains. The hooves of sunrise horses are in full gallop. No one told the bees it was a silent retreat. 
Look at my palm where these slivers of heart and fate intersect. You are here. What if a woodpecker has a migraine? A dying ash, its upturned barren candelabras, still majestic. My trailer's sliding door is stuck, gives a little more each morning. First whale pod sighting, cerulean breach and swirl, worth the sunstroke. I'm convinced this sow bug crossing my path is the same one who made love to my eraser last year. A schoolgirl crush on ponderosa pines, spiky hair, limber branches, muscled cones like silent birds. In late afternoon, pompous grass tapers shine silver as the hair in my brush. Starburst spores float over my shoulder. Someone's made a wish upon a dandelion clock. I turn around, no one is there. I hold the sun's hand until it falls asleep. The ocean creates its own light. This is Fig Tree at Big Sur. Each day leaning into morning, five fingered leaves wave in unison, beckon jays for branch play. The youngest leaves arch green faces upward, devour sun off the Pacific. The golden elders bow closer to earth, the perfect shape for water to run as rain, as fog, down to the root line. When afternoon rays light them just right, they become a ring of open palms, giving the last of what they have. This uh, poem begins the book, but it was the last one I wrote for the book. It's called Portent with Moonset and Blackbirds. For a long time, I wanted to drink a cup of winter, to become tipsy on early dark and longer starshine, the thinning light, my favorite ether. These days, I am uncertain, dead reckoning my way through, surrendering to mystery and surprise of mapless navigation. That fistful of blackbirds thrown across my windshield, I don't know what their flurried wing beats were trying to tell me. Not every moment is a teacher in the same way patience does not mean measured in action. I am only a woman who continues to bury her dead, wearing a clenched jaw that expects diamond dust from crown crush Shoulders that rise so high on worry, they mistake themselves for wings. I never liked what I was called, even though my father named me, and my name in his voice was the last word I'd hear him speak. Last night I went to bed feeling hopeless and profoundly lonely. I left the curtains open wide. Sleep plowed a ragged field of uneven rows, but in the morning's early darkness, the fullest moon poured its cool, bewitching light into the small bowls of my room and garden. As it hung impossibly low over the Pacific, I drank and drank. I have two more poems, and these are the B-sides, uh, so not in the book, but written in the same time frame, and they're love poems. This one is called Lovers in the Age of Airmail. There is a reason it is called longhand. Writing takes time to winnow out the artifice in blue-black script. You write each other page after page, month upon month, year after year, your cursive cross-stitching the Atlantic, soaring over slate rooftops through the open windows of each other's lives entwining yourself, yourselves as Chagall's lovers. You learn patience in narrow beds, the ache of missing someone you've never met. Standing near the water's edge, you watch fireworks burst and fade, a snowfall of hot stars dissolving on separate oceans. And then nothing more can be said with ink and paper. As he approaches your shore, 
brace yourself. There is no turning back from this desire, a quickening like rivulets of water off the blades of a swimmer's shoulders when he steps from the sea. And the last poem, and again, such gratitude for uh, being here with you all. Thank you. This is called How to Love Your Body. Polish a bronze moon disc, see yourself reborn through Egyptian eyes. Marvel at how the shape of your ears resembles handles of a porcelain cup. Recall night swimming, the first time tight-laced limbs learned buoyancy in the dark. End the day on a sleigh bed for adventure while dreaming. Dip sheet corners in jet. Trace arrows, fire, and flowers on your wrists instead of scars. Share it with someone worthy, yet err on the side of orgasm. Forgive its trespasses and those who have trespassed against it. No temptation lives in your shoulder's cup. Adorn it with pattern, ink, and polish. Stud it with jewels and millinery. Grow a crown of silver. Let your hands be raven-winged, the wood thrush play your throat like a harp. Honor wildness, raise the ocean in your blood. Remember the stars in your veins, your plumed ribcage. Remember you are a rare bird. Thank you so much.